Hey all, welcome to Parker's Reefs. In today's episode, I want to go over one of my favorite little devices for testing aquarium water, and that's the Taylor Speedster. So yeah, I'm still here in isolation, kicking about the house and uh, my trackies, getting some work done from the uh, home office and I'm um, still trying to keep churning out the videos for you guys at home that are doing the same sort of thing I am and trying to flatten the curve and uh, stay home and keep out of trouble and um, I'm trying to pump out as many reefing videos as I can to keep uh, both myself sane and hopefully uh, make a difference for you guys out there as well. And um, I realized when I was testing my water this morning that um, I've had a heap of questions about this little device here, the Taylor Speedster, and um, I've never done a video specifically just on it. It's always come up when uh, we've been doing uh, reviews on Aquaforest test kits or something like that, and people go, what's that thing you're using to test your water? Well, this little device is a strange one. It's, um, it's really simple. It was fairly expensive, but it's something that um, I would not live life without now. So. I'm sure everyone watching this channel is probably fairly familiar with a tritation style of test kits where you basically have a, a sample of aquarium water and uh, you drip either one or more reagents into that water and you're looking for a color change. Now, if you're like me, one, I'm colorblind, which makes it very difficult to do the color change, but also I'm, um, I'm fairly clumsy. And if I'm trying to hold onto a sample and I've got a syringe and I'm like shaking it, trying to keep it stirred while I add the drips in and I end up shaking both hands because I can't do the rub your belly and tap your head thing. So I'm shaking this sample here and I'm dripping and I'm trying to look for a color change. It actually becomes really difficult to get uh, repeatable results. And then um, the light will come in through the window and it'll make the color look like it's changed when it hasn't. It's um, something that should be really simple, but for a uh, simple guy like me, it becomes all too difficult. So. I came across the uh, Taylor Speedster and I've got to give a big shout out to a, uh, a fellow Aussie reefer who uh, brought a bunch of these in and um, sold them with some extra little uh, additions which just made them really uh, useful for aquarium testing. Since then they've been a little bit difficult to come by but um, I've got a link in my comments below from a uh, seller on eBay America that will ship to Australia at a reasonable price as well. So they end up being about 50 bucks US which I know sounds like a lot of money but once you've used one of these you won't go back. Now. I've talked a lot about the uh, device, apart from the fact of what it actually is. The Taylor Speedster, all it is is a little uh, magnetic drive. It's got, uh, you put your, uh, your sample of aquarium water, you put your sample on there, you press the go button, and you can probably hear it there. It spins a little, uh, a little uh, magnetic uh, pill around, which mixes your water for you. Now the Speedster, it's gonna be kind of hard to do here, also has a light, so it can light up your, uh, your water sample so you get a really good consistent view lighting coloration of um, the sample so you get a really precise measurement when you're uh, looking for that color change. Super simple. Um, I figured I'd show you it in use. It's going to be a pretty short video guys but um, like I said I'm just trying to keep these videos going to keep us all sane so uh, let's check it out in action. All right, so this is our Taylor Speedster and uh, one of the uh, little modifications that's been done with this one is it comes with a bit of PVC that's just been cut and has this little channel put in it and that's basically to sit in here. What that does is it allows you to use your standard size uh, test tubes. There's still a bit of room in case you have a slightly bigger one, but it just stops some kind of, I mean, you can use it without this, but they, I'll show you what happens if you, uh, it still works totally fine, but I guess, um, this just gives you a little bit of extra shrouding just to make sure it doesn't fall out or fall over just while it finds that magnet. The reason why that's needed is because the test tube that comes with the Speedster is this big beastie thing that sits in there. Now, the problem with this test tube is if you put uh, three mil of water, which some of the tests need, you end up having this tiny little splash of water down the bottom, which makes it fairly hard for the... Um, for the, the pill to spin around. Now, the other modification that uh, mine came with is the pill that normally comes, when I'm talking about pill, I'm talking about uh, these little magnetic stir bars here. The pill that comes with the uh, Taylor Speedster is pretty wide. It's about a 20 mil pill, which is too big for our smaller test tubes. You can buy these little uh, magnetic stir bars um, on eBay. I'll see if I can find a link in the description for you. These ones are about uh, five or six mil long. I'll measure them up and make sure I get a link to the correct size for you. Um, they're all PTFE, so they're not going to absorb any of the chemicals, stuff like that. Um, they're not going to tamper with your results. But basically, you put your solution in there. You can either put it on with just um, the stir, or you can put it on with the light. 
Now the camera does have a little bit of trouble picking up with the light, so um, I might do it without the light just to show you guys. You can hear once the pill gets spinning, it goes nice and quiet. But um, I'll turn the light off and we'll just go back to the, to the stir so you get a good uh, visual of what it's doing. And then we might grab a uh, alkalinity test kit from Aquaforest and I'll show you even in slow motion of how this bad boy operates. Okay, so we've got the Aquaforest uh, alkalinity test kit here and it requires step one to put uh, three drops of reagent A into the uh, test file. You can see I ended up running with the light because it turns out the camera's okay with it. Now, of course, when I've got the camera going, the reagent would splash up on the uh, test tube. So just before I put reagent B in, I'm just gonna lift it off and just swirl the uh, test tube around to make sure I get those drops of reagent. All right, now we've got those drops in, we've got reagent B, and you can see that I'm just slowly dropping them in. In fact, it's in slow motion. I'm actually doing it fairly quickly, and you can see that stir bar instantly stirring the reagent in there. Now, what's really cool is you can see we're waiting for a change from rea the reagent to go from blue to pink. Now, as you get closer to it, you can see that it just starts to get a little tinge of purple in there, and it dissipates back out to blue. Then eventually it'll get a slight tinge of pink and it'll dissipate back out to about a purpley color. And eventually it will stay pink and that's when you know you've got the reagent spot on. Because of the stir bar, you're getting a really good thorough stir. You don't have to wait as long in between drips, which um, for me, and you don't have to worry about shaking it around and getting air in your solution. You can see we're just starting to get the purple color now. Um, in fact, it's just starting to get a little bit pink when that uh, drop first hits. It's starting to hold a little bit of pink. We're going fairly pink now. Got a little bit of purple still. You can see that it's still going a little bit back, although we're pretty much at pink now. Another drop or two for good measure. You see that drop just hanging onto the tip of the uh, syringe, although it did just actually go a little bit more pink. I think we're pretty good. We'll have a look at the reading of the syringe and uh, let's have a look. Looks like we use about spot on half a milli reagent, which sits us right around 7.0, perfect. All right, folks, there you have it, the uh, Taylor Speedster. Now, I know that is a couple of seemingly different part numbers of these going about. As far as I can tell, they're all exactly the same. And as far as I can tell, they're all going to do exactly the same job that we want in an aquarium water testing sense. So if you happen to have the means to come across one of these, um, I'd highly recommend them. They seem so simple. They seem a little bit over the top until you use one and then you won't go back. That's about all I've got time for, guys. I'll um, keep pumping out these videos. I hope you're enjoying them. Feel free to let me know if you've got any suggestions, anything you want to see covered in uh, these videos. Pop it in the comments section down below. If you are enjoying them, be sure to give them a thumbs up. And if you don't want to miss out on any future videos, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification. Till next time, guys. Thanks for watching. Take care.